episode 34. Uh, we're recording on July 22nd. I'm your host, Tyler Oltoff, and with me is Kyle Wakeling. Hey, guys. And Yuki doing our recording as usual. Uh, let's start off with what we always start off with, and that would be what we've been playing. Uh, I just finished uh, Monster Mon Piece, got the Platinum, yo. Kyle's excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the help again, Kyle, with those You're trophies. welcome. You're welcome. Finally got you that. You helped me, way. so. <laughs> <laughs> All that rubbing. My Vita's like, you need to stop touching me. This is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, finally got that. Uh, also, speaking of Monster Mon Piece, I'm working on the review of that, so hopefully I'll have that up pretty soon. Uh, other than that, I've been playing some Killzone Mercenary, did the lounge play. That was a lot of fun. Uh, also played some Terraria in the lounge play. Kyle missed out. <laughs> I missed out. Yeah, I took, a, I took a break while you guys were playing some dumb game. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, that was pretty fun. So, look forward to some more next week uh, as we play some, probably some more Killzone and some other stuff. We'll figure it out as the week gets closer. <laughs> um, other than that, I played something. What did I play? I should probably grab my Vita because I oh I played uh, One Piece Unlimited World Red. Some more of that. Um, I have my Vita in my hand right now because I need to actually look. <laughs> uh, I played some MLB, some Spelunky. I just played everything. Uh, what else? Kyle, what else did I play? I'm supposed to know these things. There's, there's, I always say it. There's something I'm always forgetting. But yeah, oh, there it is. Uh, I played Atelier Rorona Plus. I need to play some more of that. I was getting mad because I didn't have any trophies in it, and I was getting annoyed that I had that 0% there, so I was like, I need to start playing some more of it so I can get a trophy. And I got a trophy. So I'm done with the game. No, I'm just kidding. I need to play more. <laughs> uh, other than that, that's about it. What about you, Kyle? Well, um, I haven't been playing as much as you. I jumped into some Killzone Mercenary with the lounge play. Um, played a little bit of... X-Blaze Code Embryo, trying to get the platinum on that. And some Hot Shots Golf, of course, but that's pretty much it for Vita. Although, I just have to mention, because I'm super awesome, that <laughs> I got Sleeping Dogs from a friend and platinumed it in four days. Damn. <laughs> Are you going to platinum it for me now? <laughs> Sure, give me your account details, Tyler. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> this is this does not sound like a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, I promise I won't mess anything up. I'll just get you some really good games. <laughs> let's delete Terraria. Let's delete that. <laughs> I'll call Sony and get Terraria mo- removed from your account. So You're like, I... Yeah, I didn't want to buy this. <laughs> Can I get a refund? The buy way... something else in the place of it? <laughs> I don't think that would fly. <laughs> no? No, because I think they'd be like, you bought this like a couple months ago. Are you sure you didn't mean to buy it? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> like, I Anyways. didn't even notice it until now. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> yeah. So that's all you've been playing? Yeah, pretty much. This week will be better, though. Uh, Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 4 comes out tomorrow, and I'll be adding that to my review. So Nice. Speaking of uh, what's coming out, uh, we should throw it on to Paul uh, with the new releases for this week. So what do we got this week, Paul? Hey, everyone. So Paul was not able to get with us to give us the new releases. He's been pretty busy. So I'm going to do the new releases for today. So uh, first up, let's talk about the European PlayStation Network update for the week of uh, July 23rd, 2014. So the new releases include... For Europe, Entwined, which is cross by via PS4 or PS3, for a price of €649 Euros or £799 or $1195. I think I got the pounds and the euros right. I don't know. <laughs> uh, then we got The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 4, Amid the Runes, priced at £399, uh, €499, euros and $755 Australian. Um, yeah. Uh, PlayStation Mobile has a whole bunch of releases. I won't go through all of those, but there's a few of them. Uh, we got some DLC for Quest for Bugs and Fish. Uh, this, well, not for that. It's for One Piece Unlimited World Red. It's called Quest for Bugs and Fish and Robin Swimsuit Pack. Um, it looks like av- availability change for LEGO Harry Potter years 5 through 7. It's now available in uh, Kuwait and Qatar. 
Uh, deal of the week, we have Dust Force for 7.99 euros, 9.99. Wait, that might be pounds. I don't know. 9.99 and 14.95 uh, American. Uh, that's what it was. Now it's 3.99 uh, euros, 4.99 pounds, and 7.55 uh, US. Uh, t- additional 10% discount for PlayStation Plus members. And uh, Ragnarok Odyssey Ace was 24.99 euros, 29.99. 29.99 uh, year pounds. I, I'm getting way too confused with those. <laughs> uh, 44.95 US, and it is now 11.99 euros, 14.99 pounds, and 22.95 US. An additional 10% discount for PlayStation Plus members. All right. Next up, we have the North American PlayStation Network PlayStation Plus update for July 22nd, 2014. So. The new releases include Atelier Rurona Plus, The Alchemist of Arland for $39.99. Um, it was, it's already been out, but I think the original one that was out was like a bonus, so you got like free DLC or whatever, so now it's just the basic edition. Um, Draw Slasher Bundle Game Plus Avatar, uh, is $5.99. Entwine, $9.99, cross buy via PS4 or PS3. Uh, The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 4, uh, it's found in the DLC. Um, App updates. We've got Netflix updating, Quello Concerts, and Redbox Instant by Verizon updating. Uh, we got a couple PlayStation Plus sales, including Backgammon Blitz, Backgammon Blitz 10,000, Blitz Bill, Billion, Billion, whatever, Batman Arkham Origins, Blackgate, Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, and Sound Shapes are all on sale via PlayStation Plus. Um, not just via PlayStation Plus, but you can get them much cheaper with PlayStation Plus. Uh, we got regular sales. Uh, I think it's the Atlas sale. I think they're all Atlas games. Uh, the main ones I would recommend getting would be Persona 4 Golden. It was $29.99. Now it is $19.99. Uh, Dragon's Crown as well is $39.99, but it's now $19.99. So that's a great deal. Uh, as well as Conception 2, Children of the Seven Stars. That was $39.99 and is now $29.99. Go grab that. We got some DLC for Atelier Rurona Plus, The Alchemist of Ireland. Uh, got some Magical Beat um, DLC. It looks like just some characters and some songs. It's a lot of them, actually. There's like six or seven uh, new character song pack thingies. Uh, One Piece Unlimited World Red is the same as uh, Europe, The Quest for Bugs and Fish, and the Robin Swimsuit pack. And earlier I said the Episode 4, Mid the Runes, is out now. So go grab that for The Walking Dead. And those are your new releases and sales and all the DLC for the week of July 22nd and 23rd for North America and Europe. So I'll throw it back to myself. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for giving us those new releases. Uh, like Kyle said, you're going get, to be getting that uh, Walking Dead Season 4, was it, right? Season 2, Episode season, 4, not Season right. 4. <laughs> season 2, Episode 4. My bad. <laughs> I need to play more of that. Yeah, we're getting we're getting close, and this one's going to be, I believe, a simultaneous release. So it's nice that the beat is getting a little love. <laughs> nice. Any other games you're getting from uh, the week, or is that the only one you're interested in at the moment? Ah, uh, that's pretty much uh, the only one. I don't uh, see anything else there, really. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Well. Let's go on to... There's a couple of reviews that uh, released this week, right, Kyle? Yeah, there's a couple of reviews. Um, we've got Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete Edition from Paul. Uh, James did Imagine Instruments and Jazz Trump's Journey. Charlie took on Ratchet and Clank Collection. And Brad finally got Starlight Inception up after that big update. Awesome. So go check those out if you're interested in any of those games. Um... Yeah, let's head on to the news. Not too much this week, so we should be able to get through this pretty quick. So let's start it off. Uh, first up, Matrico media details and a release date. Uh, we get the lowdown on Digital Dreams' upcoming infographic action game, Matrico, exclusive to PlayStation Vita. Uh, here's what Representative Roy Vandermortel, I think that's, that's probably wrong, but we'll see. A uh, level designer from Digital Dreams took to the PlayStation blog to say about Paul Bowman, uh, the person behind the music, and the way the music is integrated into Metrico. 
music is very important to us, and we're very proud of the way his music is implemented into Metrico. Over the years, pa- Palm Bowman developed an interest in having new ways for people to experience his music. Uh, the game acts as a sequencer reacting to what the player does. This way, all layers of music, bass, percussion, melody, etc., are triggered by the way the player traverses Matrico. Uh, this way, the music helps to create a coherent experience with a nice atmosphere. End quote. Uh, Matrico is set to release August 5th in North America and August 6th in Europe, and there should be a demo, I believe, heading for it. So if you're not sure, then you can do that. And yeah. Yeah, it's uh, one of those games you're probably going to need a demo for. Yeah, I played really it. Really unique. <laughs> I played it at PAX Prime, and it's difficult. Like, I played it for maybe about ten minutes, and the guy that actually is developing the game was there, and he started talking to me about it. And it's pretty fun, but it's not easy. So, if you're into challenging puzzle games, I would I would recommend it. I enjoyed it, <laughs> even though it was really loud, so I couldn't really hear the music that well because there's so many people talking around me. But I enjoyed it. Anywho, next up, uh, Western release date for Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds. Uh, beat 'em up side scroller Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds is set to launch July 29th in North America and July 30th. Oddworld new more action in the Oddworld universe. Uh, courtesy of Just Add Water and Oddworld Inhabitants, it's easy to forget that the Vita was also due a port of Munch's Odyssey HD, which launched on the PS3 in December 2012. Uh, responding on Twitter, the studio confirmed that the game was still coming. Uh, a guy by the name of at VLDKMP says, with all the new tasty news, I was wondering, does Munch HD still come to v- PS Vita? On your site, it says out soon for a while now. Thanks. And uh, Oddworld and Heavens replied saying, yes, Munch's Odyssey HD is still coming to PlayStation Vita. Smiley face. So they still didn't give any details of when, but they said it is still coming, so that's always good. Good news. <laughs> yeah. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, Danganronpa, another episode. We've got some new news on that. <laughs> um, so we already know that Komaru's megaphone hacking gun fires truth bullets, which are pieces of programming code that have a specific effect on their target. But we didn't know that the offensive truth bullets could be upgraded by purchasing decoder bullets from a shop within the game. The stats that can be upgraded this way include the firepower, ammo amount, and rapid-fire capabilities of the bullets. These upgrades secure or require Monokuma medals in order to be purchased, which you can acquire from defeated Monokumas. Speaking of truth bullets, here's the eight words that you can shoot from your megaphone as commands. Break, which deals damage to Monokuma. Burn, which sets Monokuma on fire and can be used repeatedly in rapid-fire. Paralyze, which paralyzes and damages Monokuma, has an effect area of effect that affects all Monokumas caught within it, so it's like an area attack. Uh, blow Away, which blows away Monokuma, can hit multiple Monokumas with it. Dance, which makes Monokuma dance, can make him stay in one place temporarily, so that's like a distraction. Um, connect, which places Monokuma under your control momentarily. momentarily. Um, move, which restarts shutdown machinery and when applied to switches and panels, can open up new routes, and survey, which reveals invisible objects by hitting them with light. So those last two words aren't related to Monokuma attacks or defense at all, and instead are used to have an impact on the environment instead, uh, turning your megaphone into a more than just a weapon. We've also got a bit of information on event scenes, which in addition to illustrated events, will feature animated st- style scenes, by Danganronpa, the animation director Saiji Kishi, and Studio Lairsh. Lastly, <laughs> uh, we've got info on new characters that were recently revealed, including Toa Haiji, Shirokuma, and Kurokuma. So Kaiji Toa, voiced by Shinichiro Miki, is the resistance leader against the Warriors of Hope. Shirokuma is a pure white version of Monokuma with an idol-like presence stationed at the resistance's secret base. And Kurokuma is an all-black version of Monokuma that acts as an advisor to the Warriors of Hope. Machine Gun Talk is his specialty. Danganronpa, another episode, is set to release September 25th in Japan, with no news yet on a Western localization. So we get our first look at Judas Code, the new AAA free-to-play title from Triace, uh, which has gone live over at Famitsu. 
as well as some in-game screens, which you can view on the site. The preview also looks at some of the key gameplay elements from the game. The title is described as a dramatic battlefield RPG and combines third-person shooting with a card battle game. The story for Judas Code is based around World War III, where the planet has been eroded by a mysterious pillar called Longinus. The game will be set in multiple locations across the world, with players beginning the game in Tokyo. Clearing missions will unlock cards for your deck, which will in turn improve and upgrade the strength of your team and armed forces. Gameplay is broken down into three specific modes, Main Quest, Class Mission, and Card Synthesis. The former is the main story mode of Judas Code, whereby you clear quests and proceed through the story. Class missions are a set of missions with a specific goal. Clearing these missions will unlock rewards and sound very much like function, like they function as side quests. Um, the latter, Card Synthesis, allows you to enhance your cards with rewards unlocked from the other game modes to aid you in battle. The preview also offers some details on the key characters in Judas Code, including the fact that there will be both a male and female lead who can be seen on the site. The lead character, whether you choose to be hero or heroine, is described as a mercenary without a single relative who fights in Japan's mercenary corps. Uh, the character was also involved in an accident in the past and has a strong sense of justice. Finally, a character simply referred to as Mysterious Girl has been detailed, but as you'd expect, details are thin on the ground. The girl is encountered during Judas Code by the hero heroine and is said not to speak many words, lacking motivation of her own. Thankfully, that changes thanks to the hero or heroine. Judas Code is said to really be released in Japan this summer. No word on whether the game will come west just yet, but let's hope so. And Spanish indie developer Hydra Interactive recently revealed more information on their papery new adventure game, Upside Down Dimensions. You play as Ryu and Kiko, who dwell in opposite dimensions and must simultaneously advance on the respective sides of the paper world to defeat the Dark Shogun. The gameplay features slash em up combat, stealth, and puzzle platform elements. There was also a gameplay trailer posted on the site, which came with the following comment from the developer. Quote, the game will be out on all PlayStation formats, especially the PlayStation Vita. We have been working hard on a trailer that enlightens players on what is the game backstory and some of the main mechanics that will be available while playing on different platforms. We've also been playing around with the game on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, end quote. The two protagonists have some unique abilities, but both characters are able to summon origami creatures to aid them in their journeys. Samurai Ryu, however, has a sword and shuriken to create combat chains, while Kiko has stealth and infiltration abilities, along with her trusty umbrella to get her out of sticky situations. You can expect to see Upside Down Dimensions released sometime in 2015. Wake up, Tyler. 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 Uh, I'm awake. You fell asleep, didn't you? No, my mic was muted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, you fell asleep about the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. All right. Well, let's finish up the news. <laughs> my bad, Kyle. My bad. I'm that sitting really far funny. away. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfinished Swan rated for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, a recent article in Jimitsu has noticed or noted that the game rating board in Korea has recently reviewed and rated the PS3 exclusive Unfinished Swan for both the P- PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4, uh, which highly indicates that the title will be coming to both platforms in the near future. Uh, Tokoden Extreme, new Fox, new tricks. Uh, we've got the lowdown on a little upgrade the game is bringing to our little Fox friend Tenko. Uh, previously, your little Tenko buddy only helped out by do- going on a treasure hunt to retrieve materials that can be used to make gear or t- alternatively sold for money. Uh, however, Tokoden Extreme features a slightly different newborn Tenko system, which adds a little more functionality. Uh, this new system allows you to equip Tenko with a Matama, which will then gain experience from the partnership. Uh, you can also give Tenko treats to change her mood, body color, and cry. Then, depending on her mood when she goes on a mission, the amount of materials she will bring back varies as well. 
Uh, Tokadan Extreme is slated for release in August 28th in Japan with no word on a Western release, which I need to play Tokadan more. <laughs> kind of been, kind of been busy. Yeah, me too. I got like two thirds of the way through the fifth like level or whatever, and then I ended up going to another game because I had a review game and then a whole bunch of stuff, and I just haven't gotten back. <laughs> yeah, and the game is awesome though. So I know. <laughs> I don't know you what we're doing. Need to get back there. You need to get back there. It, it's just too many game situation. There's there's yeah. a couple games that I want to play, and I'm like, uh, so many games in the go. <laughs> yep. All right. Next up, Arshika Tainted Bloodlines Digital Only in EU. Looks like we have some disappointing news for those in the EU, as another Vita game is getting the digital-only treatment. Uh, according to PlayStation's own website, we get the news by looking at the media type, which shows it's download only. Womp womp. Yeah, womp womp indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up to the next news. Baboon finally gets a release window for our lovely little handheld. For those that don't know, Baboon is a game where you play as Tom Billy, a monkey who goes out of his way to stop the pirate monkey from using his anti-gravity gun that is causing chaos on his home island. Relevo have announced that their upcoming Vita game Baboon will be available this fall for 9.95 euros. Pricing for other regions was not specified. Uh, you can watch the trailer on our site. Next up. We got new details on character additions for the upcoming release of Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate. Releasing this September in the West, Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate adds a host of new warriors to the playable roster, including guests from Bandai's Soul Calibur and Tecmo's Atelier series. The list of character additions is as follows, via Jamatsu. Sofita... I'm pretty sure that says Sofitia. Sofitia? Alexandria... Uh, is a holy warrior and mother of two who is sent on a mission by the Olympian god of fire and smithing Hephaestus. Her goal was to destroy the evil sword known as Soul Edge. However, her daughter was taken hostage, and she was forced to fight to protect the evil sword. On her way home after the end of the battle, she was swallowed up by the rift in space-time and brought to the Orochi dimension. Sturkenberg... Cranach is a former knight of the Kingdom of Ireland. Though normally quiet, calm, and collected, he roars into action when seeking information about his former king's whereabouts or when his sense of chivalry is put to the test. After escorting Princess Maruru back to Arles, he was returning to Ireland but was sucked into the rift in space-time and found himself transported to this unknown world. Neza is a young officer from the Mystic Realm, born in the area that overlapped the realms of humans and mystics. His skill got him accepted into the Mystic Army, but he lives to test himself in the most difficult battles he can find and freely wields his spear in action, no matter what situation he might encounter. Tanimo is a bewitching mystic that appeared following the defeat of the Hydra. She was a very high opinion of herself and harbors a deep hatred for humans. Tanamo thrives on the chaos and negativity that a world at war can bring. By using the inscriptions on her scroll, she is able to interfere with the efforts of the humans and appears to have teamed up with Daji in order to carry out some mysterious plot. And lastly, Ying Long is an officer from the Mystic Realm's ancient past. He fought admirably un- alongside Fu Zi and the other mystics against the demon hordes and is highly esteemed by his peers and an inspiration to his subordinates. Conversely, his sense of honesty leads him to never question the position of others, and he simply follows his convictions, which makes him somewhat inflexible at times. Um, they also released a brand new trailer for the game, which you can check out on the site, and some screens were included as well, although they were 1080p in source, and therefore not from the Vita version of the game. There's a link on the site, however, if you're interested in checking them out. Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate is set to release September 2nd in North America, and September 5th in Europe. Alright, well, that's... Uh, that's not the end of the news. Well, oh yeah, I've removed that. Kyle. Damn it. Kyle. 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 <laughs> I'm the Anywho. one that's tired. <laughs> yeah, well, you're like, do this, do that, we're moving this, move that, and I was getting me, and then, yeah, uh-huh. that's what uh-huh. happened, Tyler. Mister, <laughs> you move all the news around it after I completed it, and then I have to change <laughs> everything myself? Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. We all make mistakes. Okay? It's okay. Yeah, I agree. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Believe in me! <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's head on to uh, the talking points, correct? Yes, sir. Oh yeah. So for talking points, as usual, we usually talk about announced or released games that we're looking forward to from the week. 
So what do you think, Tally? Well, uh, or a sheet contain of bloodlines is on my list, and I've I haven't really looked too much into it, but from what I've seen of screenshots and I think one trailer I've watched, I'm really interested in it. Uh, as well as um, much as Odyssey HD, although we still don't know when it's coming. Uh, the Dan Gan, another episode that was <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome. I hope it gets announced for the West. And uh, the Unfinished Swan, I've, I've never played it, but uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about how amazing it is. So if it comes to the Vita as it's looking like it will, then I would love to jump on that, try that one out. What about you? All right. Well, I'm looking forward to Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 4 this week. That's going to be fun. Nice. Um, I think Metrico looks pretty uh, unique, so I'm looking forward to trying out the demo for that and seeing if I'm interested in, you know, getting the full game for that one. Yeah. Um, definitely Danganronpa, another episode. I, I love that. And I'm thinking that every update makes this game look better. So <laughs> So announce it for the West already. <laughs> yeah, just just do it. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, uh, there's a couple that I have my eye on. Uh, Upside Down Dimensions definitely looks unique. Um, Unfinished Swan as well. Um, and Baboon. Um, I think it's pretty cute, and depending on the price uh, over here in North America, I might pick that one up as well. Nice. All right, I think that moves us to our uh, next talking point here. Uh, which is also a game that I think we'd both like to see, which is Freedom Wars. <laughs> um, as in a dramatic U-turn, the European PlayStation blog has announced that Japan Studios Freedom Wars will be receiving a full physical edition when it goes on sale in Europe later this year. Insert cheering and clapping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the fans go wild. Um, a few weeks back, it was announced that the highly anticipated Freedom Wars would be getting a digital-only release in Europe, and we actually talked about that on our last podcast. Fred Dutton, who gave the news that the game would be digital-only, took to the PlayStation blog earlier to report that Sony had been listening to fans' demands on forums and social media for a physical version. So the physical version of Freedom Wars will release on the PlayStation Vita at the same time as the digital version, so keep your eyes out for more news on the date. So this is awesome. <laughs> but as uh, we were talking earlier, and before we started recording, uh, it, it doesn't make sense why they'd wait if they could just be like, hey, we're not going to do it digital only now, <laughs> like you are saying, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure why they would wait, um, unless they really thought that it was going to do that bad in the West. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty... Pretty unique game. Um, it's been hyped a lot in Japan, so even over here, like pretty much if you've gone to any Vita websites, you've heard about Freedom Wars. Um, so really, I, I, I couldn't see them not, you know, selling enough to justify it. So I, I'm not sure what their reasoning was behind that, but I'm sure that, you know, those physical collectors and the people who hate digital and want to save memory card space are loving them right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a little weird, and it's I can see it being very frustrating. And I would I would hope that people would learn about the fact that it's being physical now, because I feel like some people may have just tuned out of anything Freedom Wars now because of knowing that it's digital only, so they just stopped caring. So I I don't see if that that would actually help. You know, saying that it's digital only at first, and then coming back a week later saying, "Hey, guess what? It's it's physical now too." You know. Well, the only thing is that it does show that Sony listens. Right. As we said, you know, we want this and blah, 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 and people blew up everywhere and, you know, bitched and complained, and it happened. <laughs> so, like, it, the only thing that that says to me is every time that a game comes out and they say, you know, digital only, just bitch and complain until there's so many people that they can't stop, you know, listening to you, and then it happens, because obviously it works. I mean, yeah. don't be a dick about it. All those people who are sending nasty messages, I'm sure they don't appreciate that. But, you know, a, a nice little message saying, hey, um, I'm disappointed that, you know, this game isn't coming out. Could you please help get this on the system or look into, you know, based on responses, some some sort of response to this? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm sure you'd get a lot more, you know, response easier than there was a little bit of hate. <laughs> so, yeah, just a um, <laughs> I think uh, I think maybe you know the nicer side. Obviously, now that we've seen that they'll listen, the nicer side might be a good idea next time. Um, 
so all those people who are looking for Oreshika to come over here, physical, yeah. uh, or as we've seen, um, might be the Ratchet and Clank collection in North America needs physical, then, you know, voice your complaints, but be nice about it, please. <laughs> They'd probably appreciate that. And uh, I know that, you know, being mean about it isn't going to do any good for the Vita community, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much all we can really talk about it. It's it's awesome that this yeah. is doing this. So yeah, I'm really glad. Like I I wasn't particularly perturbed about this, but I understand that other people were, and I'm glad that you know they've addressed their concerns and tried to make it best for everybody. Yeah. So, go that Sony. Just, that just <laughs> means more people are going to get the game. More people are going to be online. More people are going to have fun. <laughs> exactly. So it's a win-win for everyone. All right. So I think that's it for our. Talking points, although we do have some listener mail this week. Uh, first up, from Marcus, since he couldn't be here, um, at Cockboy on Twitter, he says, how much do you guys use remote play, if at all? I don't use it at all, actually. Uh, <laughs> I've been using my PS4 mostly for like streaming TV shows and movies on Netflix and Hulu. Occasionally, I've thought about playing a game. And then I was like, my Vita has more games I feel like playing right now. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I don't have a use for remote play at the moment. Yeah, for me, um, I use it quite a bit. Um, I still do prefer, you know, the look of that crisp, clean graphics on my nice TV. So, I do boot up the PlayStation 4 quite a bit. However... Um, if I'm just lounging around and kind of feel lazy or if I'm like doing something where I'm watching TV at the same time, I definitely boot up remote play. Although I must say I haven't been playing my PlayStation 4 very much lately. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to get that Guacamelee Super Tr- Turbo Championship Edition and some other stuff that's coming out. But, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just been kind of cleaning up backlogs and other things that I wanted to do. So yeah. yeah. Kind of gets in the way. But yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely think um, with more games command and stuff like that, especially games like Wacamelee, which even though it's going to look probably nicer on the you know big screen, it's going to look just perfect on the Vita. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the first one, it looked awesome on the Vita, so I don't see it you know looking bad on the Vita. So that's that's one of those games that I'd probably play almost all the way through on my Vita. So it does get used, but... I think there's there's definitely a call for that graphics bump on the PlayStation 4 from playing it native. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question, I think. Uh, Xtema, at X-T-E-M-M-A, on Twitter, asks, We know that good Vita sales in Japan wasn't for the interest in remote play use, because PlayStation 4 is a bit of a disaster over there. Why? So is he asking why is PS4 a disaster over there? Um, or is he? Uh, I, I think <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not really sure this is necessarily a Vita question, although I guess we can answer this anyway. Yeah, um, I, I kind of <laughs> think it it kind of relates. It's I feel like the PS4 doesn't have games that are centered around the Japanese audience as much as it does for the Western audience, and it's the opposite for the Vita. The Vita has a ton of Japanese role-playing games and RPGs and all that that are really interesting to the Japanese audience and are not so much to the Western audience. So it's kind of a flip-flop between the two, is what I, is how I feel. Yeah, I'd kind of agree with that, especially since um, the PlayStation 4 has a severe lack of RPGs in Japan right now. So yeah. um, really waiting until those ones come out, that'll, that'll be when people jump on kind of more to the PlayStation bandwagon because that's kind of, not not to stereotype them, but that's kind of the Asian thing is RPGs. So that's where most of our good ones came from, and I'm sure that once they get good ones on PlayStation 4... You'll be seeing a lot more remote play and people buying PS4s. So there's just not the game library that they're they're used to over there. Right yeah. But yeah, good Vita sales in Japan is nice. So <laughs> since <laughs> they're getting so many that. good, yeah, since they're get getting so many good Japanese games, I uh, we can't complain about that, and we're cool with that. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, looks like Chris Tucker is asking some questions here. Uh, he says. If you could develop a PlayStation Vita game, what would it be? Um, well, I'm not a developer, so I wouldn't be the best at it. But if I had the skills, 
I would probably... There's two games that I kind of want to... Would go for. Maybe a horror game and... Because there's not too many horror games on the Vita. And I'd make it, like, a legitimate horror game. Like, you would probably want to put a wrist strap on your Vita so you don't drop your Vita. That's how scary it would be. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'd actually probably sell it with it. Like, put it inside. Like, you need this. (laughs) (laughs) And people are like, oh, snap. I do need this. (laughs) Send, send, (laughs) too. Um... Uh, I don't really know like all the details about it, but just a horror game, I guess. And then um, I think the Vita needs another first-person shooter, and I would make it a little beefier than Killzone. Killzone's awesome, but th- I feel like they could have added a couple more things, like maybe um, some more maps. Uh, more, I, th- I think Killzone could benefit from maybe co-op multiplayer, like for the campaign and whatnot. But what do I know? I'm not a developer. <laughs> but I would make a first-person shooter game, its own unique story, its own setting, all that fun stuff, and give it more of a center of co-op and online play and a story. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, <laughs> there's so many games that I would develop if I was a developer, but I've always thought that a really cool free, like, free roam Uh, open world game would be awesome. Um, It'd be nice to have one where it sort of combines elements from a couple different games, like, say, um, the parkour elements from Mirror's Edge, um, the skateboarding elements from Skate. Maybe you can get bicycles and do, like, bicycle tricks and shit. Um, You you should be able to get, like, all those sorts of stuff. Like, it should be, like, you know, open world car driving, like Grand Theft Auto kind of thing, where you can, like, steal somebody's car or bust into cars and take them. Um, but also stuff like, you know, you can buy rollerblades and rollerblade down the street or, you know, do parkour running across the city or something like that. Just, I'd love something where it combined like a lot of different, uh, ways to get places with, you know, missions, whether it be missions like in Mirror's Edge where it's, you know, get here, go there, deliver a package, or it's, you know, there's gangs around the city and you have to watch out for them and kick their asses. Like, you know, whatever. I, I just think, you know, a free world, uh, free roam open world game with a lot of different traveling methods and, and missions that you kind of find around the city would be awesome. So yeah, that's what I'd develop. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd probably cost a billion dollars. <laughs> I'd buy your game, Kyle. Well, there you go. <laughs> you got one cell already. One cell. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I think that's what uh, we develop. Some of our ideas are pretty realistic, some not so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we'd be interesting in interested in hearing what you guys would develop too. So if you want, guys want to send us in, in a message, you know, detailing a game you might develop, we'd uh, we'd be interested in hearing that, and we might read off some good ones on on the podcast here. So that's always an idea as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, Next up, our last listener mail here uh, from Carl Rowland at Melon underscore Constant. He says, when do you think we'll get a firmware update and what do you think slash hope it, it'll contain? I hope we finally get a copy paste and that bubbles stay where they are. By the way, do you think that there will be a grip added with R2 and L2 in the future? Uh, the last question, I don't think so. But you never know, because the 3DS got that other circle pad, so it has dual sticks, I guess. So there's always a chance uh, that we could get that added, but I kind of think it's doubtful. Um, as for the other one, what do I hope or think? I'm not really sure, actually. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about people wanting it to be going to like the PS4 UI, and getting away from these bubbles because people hate the bubbles and think they look horrible. Um, I don't agree, really, that the bubbles look that bad. I've gotten used to it, so I guess it's kind of just one of those things that I've dealt with, and now, to me, it's just I'm used to it. (laughs) Whenever I turn my Vita on, I expect the bubbles, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not really helpful with this one. What about you, Kyle? There's so much. Um, If I listed it all, we'd be here for a day. But um, the ones off the top of my head, DLNA support, so the ability to stream music from a server or movies from a server to your Vita, um, 
I, I don't see why that wasn't added. I believe it was a part of the PSP. It's in the PS3. Uh, they took it out of the PlayStation 4 for some reason. But, um, yeah, it, it needs to go in there. Um, some some other things that, that would be nice, I guess, would be um, some more settings, I guess, for, like, different times that you can set your backlight to go off. There's a couple settings now, but I always find myself, like, not happy with them. <laughs> um, also, um, s- some better settings, I guess, for, uh, older games would be nice. I know they have, like, a couple of, of graphics, like, settings or whatever, but I don't see why that they couldn't add, um, some more. I don't think the, the PlayStation, uh, portable emulator on there is too, too intensive, so I don't see why they couldn't add some more, you know, effects or anti-aliasing or something that you add to the game in After Effects. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's a lot of cosmetic stuff. Um, yeah, I, I like the bubbles, so I'd like to keep that. Although, um, I think that they could use a little bit more smoothing around the edges. I know we've got one update to address that, but they still look a little jaggy sometimes. <laughs> um, and, and maybe something, something for the backgrounds and for the lock screen for, for themes. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like there's most of the stuff that I want is like coding stuff that you would never see. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I, what I hope it'll contain or think it'll contain is two different things. What I think it'll contain is probably bug fixes and something small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So yeah. Um, copy paste. That'd be nice. That'd be something small that they could throw in. But I'm not sure how their code is set up whether that would be fe- easily feasible or not. So that would depend, I guess, on them. Um, and as for the added grip with the added R2, L2 in the future, yes and no. Um, I could definitely see them doing something where, you know, it clips onto the top of your Vita and it's got, like, um, the stylus ends on it where it touches the back of your Vita and you could, like, set, you know, the top corners for R2 and L2 and then... When you, when you actually like pull down on the trigger, it touches there like you're touching your finger. I could see them doing something like that where it's not actually like a hardware add on, but I don't think they're ever going to, you know, have a hardware add on where these new buttons appear on the back of your Vita and you're going to be able to map things to them. I think that's going to break compatibility for a lot of things, uh, as Yuki mentioned actually in the chat. And I think that's just not, not feasible right now and, and with, you know, how far we've come so far. Interesting. That's actually a really good idea with the stylus thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it would work, and it would be it would be um, dependent on on the clip really like holding it on top because you'd have off, obviously have to put like some pressure on it to get it to work right, like your finger. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like as long as you could get this the secure um, connection, I guess, like to hold it on there. It would definitely work. So. Yeah, just send a concept design to Mad Cats or whatever that <laughs> company that makes things. I can't think of the other one. What's the other one that makes a lot of Vita ones? I have no idea. I don't yeah, like I can't Vita think accessories. Of... <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Anywho, my Vita is naked. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Naked Vita. <laughs> Alrighty. So I think that's it for our uh, listener mail here. Is it not? I think it is. I think it is. Tis it is. All right. So moving on. All right. For my game of the week this week, I recommend that you pick up Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 1 through 3. I know 4 is coming out this week, and 5 should be somewhere down the line soon, hopefully. Um, So, yeah, I think it's about time that you should start catching up, especially if you're not somebody who plays them all in one sitting like me. (laughs) Very nice. I need to start playing some more, like I think I said earlier in the show. Uh, <laughs> I have all the episodes except for four and five, but I've only played through one, so. Boo! I know. How, how can you leave Clementine like that? Well, the thing is, help. <laughs> is I'm doing the Let's Play on my YouTube channel, so I've kind of just been busy, so I haven't continued doing the Let's Play yet, so... Whenever I play, I record, which it makes it kind of inconvenient <laughs> because that means wow. I have to have everything set up to record and play. 
Well, Tyler, once once you get this Monster Mon piece review done, you'll have a little bit more time because you'll only have one in the queue that you can do pretty much at your leisure. So that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll figure it out. God, don't worry. I'll, I'll finish The Walking Dead Season 2. Don't worry. <laughs> do it, Tyler. Do it. <laughs> All right. Well, go grab that game, like Kyle said, and enjoy it. And love its awesome zombiness. <laughs> but for now, we are out of here. Right, Kyle? Ah. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> Your voice just, like, went crazy robot right there. Aw, uh, no good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I mean, let's, so. <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here. <clears throat> uh, as usual, you can find all the stories that we talked about and more on the Uh We're all on Twitter. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. Yuki is at Yuki, Yuki underscore WR. Uh, Marcus, who wasn't here, is at Cackboy, K-A-C-B-O-Y. Um, you can also find us our... Don't forget to search the Vita Lounge on Twitter as well. And you can find us on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. Uh, we're also on YouTube. We do lounge plays every Saturday around 1 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, we play a lot of Killzone, and then we switch it up every once in a while with a different game. Uh, don't know what we're going to do this week, but Killzone is probably going to be on there. So <laughs> go ahead and update your Killzone if it needs an update. Um, also, the forum. Uh, sign up for that. Join the conversation. Introduce yourself. Start up a topic. Join a topic. All that forumy stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't bite. Yeah. <laughs> we promise. <laughs> well, so Tyler funny. does, but we got a muzzle. <laughs> yeah. And I'm free right now, so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, iTunes, we are on there, finally. Been up there for a bit now, so feel free to subscribe. Uh, let us know how we're doing. Rate us. All that itunes stuff. <laughs> And we are out of here. That's all we got. Bye. All right, later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>